Welcome back to our part four of our homeopath interview with Julia Edgeley talking everything eczema and TSW. Welcome Julia, thank you so much for My joining pleasure. me here again thank you for, having me. <laughs> for our very last part. And in this part we're actually going to delve down deep in the subject of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which is something that many, many patients do have with TSW and with eczema, with chronic skin conditions. And we're gonna learn from Julia how to cope with it, how to try and manage it so that we are in a better mental state with our skin condition. Julia, tell me a little bit about what you've seen so far with some of your patients who have TSW and extreme eczema um, and how this is very much linked to PTSD. Yeah. It's, I'm really, really glad that I can talk to you about it because it's just, I think a lot of people, patients with TSW, with eczema, they don't even realise they've got PTSD. Yeah. And I think you, you will, I can use you as an example. Use me as an example. Is where you say like the idea of when you get a bit of an eruption yes. or a bit of a flare. Yes. You, go, you haven't done it in a long time, but that complete yeah. panic. Yeah, oh yeah. And you're like, yeah. oh my God, I'm never going to get better. I'm stuck oh, in this. You yeah. get intrusive thoughts. Yeah. You can get breathing difficulties. You yeah. don't sleep. Yeah. And the idea that I am never going to get better from That's this. It. These yeah. are all signs of PTSD. PTSD. And yeah. what can happen is when people are not aware they have post-traumatic stress disorder, yes. they don't realize how stressed they actually are That's and it. the trauma they've gone through. Yes. And so a lot of patients with um, TSW, with long-term chronic TSW, mm -hmm. I would recommend that you actually work with a counsellor or a therapist yes. to really help you, or even I'm gonna talk you through a few tools, mm -hmm. not necessarily homeopathic, but tools you can do to help manage your PTSD. Okay. Because that was gonna have a contributing factor to the inflammation in your yes. body. Now I know if somebody if I, if somebody's listening to this and they have really bad TSW and I tell them your stress is contributing to it, that make them, might make them go into a panic. Yes. Please don't worry. I just need you to recognise that you're in this because when you are aware of it, you can then do something about it. Okay. This is mostly to raise awareness about it okay. because um, we all know stress with sleep, with the inflammation in the body, from the itch. When you're aware of PTSD and you factor in that aspect of your treatment plan, mm -hmm. this will change everything. If you are a patient that has tried diets, you've tried supplements, yes. everything, but you haven't addressed the stress, the PTSD, mm -hmm. you might find that your reaction, your um, healing journey, is that what you call it? Yes. Healing path yeah. is not the way it wants to be mm -hmm. because you have to you have to address the PTSD. Right, okay. And this goes hand in hand with a bit of depression as well because yes. I remember yeah. sitting, as I said before in our previous parts of our video series, you know, sitting in this chair and, you know, crying really to you think, and asking, you know, I just don't feel like I'm ever going to improve or yeah. get any better. I mean, that was quite acute. You know, that was yes. good signs of PTSD. And I, I hadn't really known enough about homeopathy before, you yes. know. And this is another sort of subject on its own, but you know, when I was little and I would go to my medical practitioner, yeah. you know, my my local doctor, and you know, I must have been about three years old, five years old, and they would say to my mom, you know, Layla's gonna have eczema for the rest of her life. So you yes. just have to learn to manage it, you know. Yeah. And so that memory as well of doing go through that process as a child to then having TSW as an adult, you know, it was there was kind of a, a relationship between those two, yeah. you know, my present day and the memory of us having had the eczema and I think that sparked a lot of my PTSD and a lot of depression alongside it, thinking yeah. I will never go out again, I will never have a life again, I will never sit in a restaurant and go for a drink with friends anymore, I'm yes. gonna miss out on everything in life, you know, I want to go to this party but there's no way I'm gonna accept an invitation I because, remember of, that. because of my physical appearance. And you know, for me, it was just a blessing to be in a lockdown because then I didn't have to face anybody or see anybody. Yeah. It was a blessing for me to wear a mask even though that wasn't very comfortable, but then people didn't have to see my skin. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of our audience can really relate to this and relate to these sort of different types of stories. So yeah. it's just a great platform to have here, you know, just to sort of air it all out yeah. and to know that PTSD is, is totally normal, you know, and it's totally It's acceptable. part of the picture, it's absolutely part of it, especially like you said, if you told that this is it, that's all you've got. Yes. The panic of like, well, what if it gets worse? What that's if, it. what if, yeah. all these intrusive thoughts. Yeah, the quality of my life will be exactly not like a normal person's anymore. Yeah, if you have TSW, you have PTSD. Yeah, right. Absolutely, it's and then as well, imagine when you had your daughter, the worry about my kids, are my kids gonna have yes. this? And then, yeah, and then you're totally. really the memory totally. of that. Totally, yeah, absolutely. It is a huge factor yeah. in it, and so it has to be addressed, has yeah. to be managed yes. um, and sometimes 
that can be what we say in homeopathy, but it can be in any therapy an obstacle to cure. Right. When you have a patient and they just they cannot get past oh, the stress. Right. The stress, I'm like, okay, we need to kind of address this first yeah. before I can even really go near your skin. Right. Because emotionally it will just be it can be even more stressful doing the diet. Yeah. Because of yes. PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. I, because yeah. I always remind you every time you're having <laughs> those gluten free cereals, yeah. you're like, oh my God, I'm sick, I'm ill, I'm never going to get better. Yes. So that can flare up the PTSD. Right. So you actually have to see the intensity of it in a patient's case to see, okay, we need to address this first. Right. And we'll do everything else will be management until yeah. we can really get into the deep yeah. treatment of the skin. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It can be that yeah. big. It can be that yeah. powerful um, of a symptom okay. in a case. So if we were looking at treatment, Treating somebody with TSW or severe eczema as an onion, yes. the first layer is really treating that PTSD initially. It can be. It can be. And then getting to more of those maintaining causes and yes. the root causes, and, and then obviously treating liver issues, gut issues. Exactly. And then, and then going on sort of a treatment plan with yourself yeah. and alongside having those remedies and yeah. the re remedies that we've mentioned in other parts of this series as well. And then what else um, could we do with our PTSD? I mean, uh, anything initial that we can take okay. for our remedies, for our symptoms, for... Well, I'll tell you one thing that's not necessarily a remedy. Okay. Because I can imagine that somebody who's going to TSW, you know yourself, you can be on a lot of things. Yes. So sometimes you want you don't have to be taking something else. Okay. So in some cases, I will recommend herbs. Yes. In some cases, the, the clear homeopathic remedy, because. PTSD, how you emotionally respond to your eczema can be one of those global symptoms. Okay. So it can be very individual, the remedy. I'll talk about four really acute remedies that will be working, but you don't want to be taking something else. Right. Another herb, another supplement. So right. what you can do is lifestyle changes. One, you can do, um, what I love is binaural beats. You know I love binaural yes, beats. Yes, yes, yes. So binaural beats. They, um, they are not to replace any type of medication for anxiety or anything, because mm -hmm. some patients can be on anxiety medication as well. What are they do is to give you that moment of relaxation where you can get you can change your nervous system response. Uh -huh. So it's actually quite physical. Mm -hmm. And you can just if you've ever tried meditation, I don't know if you've ever tried meditation. I, I you know, I have tried it. I'm rubbish at it. I'm not very good at it. No, I'm not no, really I don't really have that switch off. You know, no. sense. I think I think you really have meditation is something you really have to work out. You know, oh, you really, have to every single every day, single day dedicated it's, it's, to it. It's like I, I just don't. I do can do really... it when my life is calm, but not yeah. when my life is hectic. But they say when your life is yeah. hectic, that's when you need it. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> so binaural. If that sounds like you, binaural beats is going yes. to help you. So binaural yeah. beats. Our ears hear to do, uh, um, slightly differently, and so binaural beats. It can be um, cachet, hidden in hidden, music. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. hidden in music, um, or bird songs, or piano, yes. or river yeah. songs. And it changes the um, our brain waves. Okay. So there's different brain waves, yeah. and will change you into the brain waves for relaxation. Right. Similar to meditation. Yeah. I've had patients who adore their binaural beats. On my Instagram, I do binaural beats Mondays, where yes. I do one minute of an example just to show. I do different types of beats. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell when somebody is anxious because I will do I will put on a binaural beat that will increase their brain activity for creativity for motivation. Right. And they will come back to me going, Oh my god, I felt frenzied after that. That means they were already quite anxious. Right. So I generally will do it for to calm you down. So okay. if you want to if now that we've spoken about PTSD, mm -hmm. you can say, Oh my god, I had PTSD and I didn't realise it, but what should I do? You then need to see how it manifests in a daily um, in daily life. So right. it can be, for example, you broke your favourite cup and you go into a, a panic attack. Yeah. That's a sign of PTSD. And yeah. you're like, I, can't, I don't understand why that triggered me. Yeah. That means your nervous system is just like this. So then you can have a time when you will listen to your binaural beats. Mm -hmm. Morning times are great. Yeah. Afternoon, just after lunch is fantastic. Yeah. You will find the music. You can find these on YouTube. Right? And you can listen to it for 10 minutes. So you have to listen to it with earphones. Right. Because it has to be, or even noise cancelling will be fantastic. Okay. You have to sit in a very comfortable chair. Yeah. You listen to your binaural beats for 10 minutes and you do your breathing exercises. Yes. Yes. So you are not doing anything, you're just listening. Okay. okay, and you're concentrating on your breathing and over time this will physically impact your nervous system Brilliant. so then you can then process mm -hmm. the memories for That's example when you're a child yes. you can bring you're not afraid of the emotions are coming up and yeah. then when that happens you can yeah. start the journey right get yes. all the these journey, emotions yeah. out so if Brilliant. you can't have you haven't got access to a counselor or a therapist yes this is a tool that you can use. That's wonderful, yeah. So that is something that is non-invasive. Everybody uh -huh. can do binaural beats. Uh -huh. Just be very aware of the, what you want to achieve with the beats. Like uh -huh. I said, if you are already quite, somebody who's quite wound up 
and you listen to something that motivates you, you're going to get more wound up. Yeah. So you have to be yeah. very, very okay. aware of that. And how long should we listen to these binaural beats for? I am. Um, I think a minimum is ten minutes. Ten minutes a day. I mean, if you can do five minutes, I'm happy with anything. Yeah. It's a small amount over time. Okay. PTSD is not something that you get rid. Of. You you work through PTSD. Ma yeah. You don't stop it. Okay. Right. That's the continual process. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, like it's a separate onion to itself. Okay. We just need to be aware that it is present in TSW. Okay. And with the journaling, yeah. sort of, you know, like a week after you've tried doing your binaural orbits, or is there a sensation that you think right now I can actually put pen to paper or you when you feel the emotion because usually PTSD it's an overwhelming panic or yes. overwhelming fear yes. or an overwhelming um, sometimes it can be anger. Right. Things like you even you're thinking, where did this emotion come from? Yes. Where you can start to pinpoint it to a memory or a memory comes up or you can actually start to feel more comfortable with feeling the emotion. It doesn't flare right. like your skin. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. take over you. Yeah, that's when you can start the, yeah, yeah. You can okay. start the journaling. Okay. That's yeah. And all, when I say journaling, literally you just say, describing exactly how you're feeling, yeah. see what memories come up. Mm -hmm. Something about PTSD, when a strong memory can't come up, yeah. um, that can be... It can be too traumatizing again, so this is where you kind of want to start looking for somebody, reach out to somebody to talk you through it as well. Through it as yeah. well yeah. It's not something that I would recommend you, you do totally on your own. Yeah, okay. You need a bit of a help you with this. Even a group support in this. Oh, wonderful. Okay, yeah. brilliant. So, yeah, so, so seeking out some professional help, counseling, obviously, you know, the binaural beats. And go ahead and check out uh, Julia on her Instagram account. She's Julia at Julia Homeopath. Mm -hmm. And every Monday on her story, she does her binaural beats. Um, and we'll also put a link below to Julia's Instagram account as well as some um, binaural beats uh, from YouTube as well. Um, and just go ahead and give those a try because yeah, I do binaural beats in the evenings. Oh, do you in the evenings? I do in the evenings. You know, I've, lately I've had a very fast paced life. Yeah, we were just talking about <laughs> yeah, that. just talking about that before you came in about that. I mean, yes. that's one thing I've learned in terms of, you know, post TSW is that the moment I start vibrating on a much higher scale yeah. is, is very much linked to how soon will I have a flare up and, you know. Oh, that's very insightful. Yes. That's very well connected yeah. to your symptoms. Yes. Yeah. Because I think, you know, if I'm overdoing things yeah. and I'm overstimulating myself and I'm, mm -hmm. you know, putting too many projects on my table and all of that, yeah. that is just adding to my stress level. That is just, you know, sparking off my... PTSD, yes. you know, and, and triggering things and really uh, it's all about just trying to manage myself better now because I'm sort of yes. in the management phase of, of my condition yeah. and, you know, so for those that are in the really thick of it, you know, to realise that yeah. your whole lifestyle needs to, you need to scrap what everything you've done beforehand, yeah. I feel, you know, as much as you possibly yeah. can. I mean, you know, every every individual is different and we totally understand that. I had a great phrase there. What's the phrase that you use? Vibrating. <laughs> Yeah, I think actually if you are starting your TSW and you're just watching this video, you're there. Yeah. And you that's don't even it. realise you're that's there. That's it, yeah. So I'm doing so when I was talking about my treatment plans and everything, I'm just trying to bring that down. Yeah. So then you can see like Layla, okay, now I can see what's going on yes. in my life. Yeah, that's yeah. it. You got but you're there. Yeah, you're constantly. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that, that's sort of because we're used to fast paced lives in, in modern day society. Yeah. I mean, you know the glorification of being busy. So there's a few remedies you can take, okay, if you're not already on a truckload already. <laughs> so um, these are very short, just to, again, a management mm -hmm. homeopathic remedy. This is not homeopathic treatment as a okay. whole. Um, so four remedies I would suggest that you could try for PTSD. Okay. First one that you always think of is opium. Oh yeah. It's actually opium. <laughs> it is, it's a homeopathic opium, okay. which means to leave it down. Yeah. And uh, opium, they go, there's complete disconnect. Right. They don't even realize opium. Sometimes it can go a bit catatonic when, for example, you've broken your favorite cup, you go and you can't even breathe and yeah, you're yeah. holding your breath. Okay. That is an opium symptom. Right. Now, if you're taking opium, if opium works on a very deep level for you, okay. expect it to kind of open the floodgates of emotion. You'll want to cry all the time. Yeah. You feel great for the cry. Yeah. Be prepared for that to happen. Okay. So it's basically just taking the lid off that pressure cooker right. because that's what it is. It's a very tightly closed pressure cooker. Uh -huh. It's a pressure cooker that doesn't even realize it's a pressure cooker. So that's opium. The other one is Ignatia. Again, I give you these. Ignatia, I had Ignatia. Ignatia. Ignatia is a fantastic remedy, yeah. and I use it as a therapeutic. And how you know if you're in Ignatia PTSD is you will cry and laugh at the same time, oh, yeah. or you will scream and laugh at the same time, or you will lose your temper and then you're crying and then you're laughing. It, yeah. You just kind of seen, oh my god, I'm all over the place. Yeah. That's Ignatia. Uh -huh. It's a very, very good therapeutic remedy just to get you through that. Because sometimes when you you your eyes are open now that you have PTSD, you feel you get the symptoms more. 
It's only because you're aware of it. Yeah, you're aware of it, yeah. So Ignatius is very good for that. Next one is Aconite. So Aconite will look like the traditional panic attack. So if you kind of, if you have a small trigger and you seem to have a panic attack and you're like, and you can't really see why I'm panicking over this, mm -hmm. Aconite will be very, very good for you. Okay, yeah. great. It can really sometimes specifically happen around midnight. That's a very specific Aconite. Oh, right. So you feel like in the middle of the night you wake up panicked. Aconite is a very good support remedy. Okay, another panic attack. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So the final remedy I would recommend into a support PTSD is Gelsemium. Now Gelsemium will feel, it won't be as acute as Aconite, but it can be that um, scare, you feel scared that you're just trembling. Like you just start to tremble for no reason. Right. That is Gelsemium. Sometimes the room can be a bit spinny, you feel headachey, um, dread feeling. That is a Gelsemium type of feeling. So these will be help you to support your how your PTSD um, manifests, how it presents right. um, in everyday life. These okay. can help you. Okay, brilliant. Any others? Or? The other four main Those ones. Anything other than that would be deeper treatment. deeper treatment. So that's when you would go to see a homeopath for this. Okay. And they could use herbs or homeopathic remedies. Okay. And, and how, how would you take these again? As of when you have the panic attack? or Yes, you, so you, you would take 30 CH. I would recommend 30 CH just uh -huh. for if you're just using it as a therapeutic. Yes. Meaning if you're just using it to address one, one symptom. One symptom. Uh, you take granules mm -hmm. and you would pop one under the tongue as you can feel the symptoms building, um, sometimes they can come out of the blue. So just be prepared, pass me my homeopathic remedy. So you take one and you would yeah. repeat it 15 minutes later. Right. And it kind of brings it slowly decreasing intensity of the symptoms. Okay, fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. My pleasure. So again, if those of you who want to get hold of those homeopathic remedies, then you can seek them out online and we'll put some links in the description below where you can get them. Um, for us here in France, can you get them over the counter in the UK? Um, no. You not can't, you have to go to not specific not. homeopathic remedies, they do deliver. Okay. In France, on the continent actually, yeah. in many countries you can get them in all pharmacies. Right. And in the US you can get them in certain health food stores. Okay. But there are homeopathic pharmacies in the US as well. Okay. As well, Australia, globally actually, there's, globally. There's, each country will have its homeopathic pharmacy. Pharmacy, okay, brilliant. And otherwise you can get them online at homeopathic websites. Exactly, and they, they deliver around the world. Okay, and the quality is sort of the same? Like yes. all the quality across the board is... I Generally, the, the pharmacies I will, we will, you will link, link yeah. will all be good quality. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your My time. My pleasure. And thank you so much for joining us. I think we've heard, learned such a wealth of knowledge about how to cope with all of these different aspects of TSW. And I'm gonna put Julia Edgley details in the link below as well because she is available for consultation on zoom is it yes. worldwide if you are interested in booking consultation and and having a one-to-one -one with julia then you can go ahead and book that with her as well um, also don't forget to look up julia um, homeopath on instagram so you can follow all her dailies because you really do put together the best content ever in terms of oh, all you. sorts of wellness and well-being and, and obviously you've also got your clean beauty recommendations as yes. well and swapping out your your products and non-toxic products yes which is also another you know attribute to try and heal the liver and you know yeah. your wellness in general is removing exactly. some of those very toxic products that we sort of have introduced in our everyday lives that we can become more sensitive to alongside exactly it, though the energy. ingredients in our personal care products in in some people can contribute to your pathology to your symptoms okay. so in some cases I would recommend that we would swap it at certain degrees okay. and cleaning products as well in your house yes absolutely yes I've, I've gone completely toxic free in my house and I'm very proud of myself <laughs> <laughs> and well thank you so much for your time my pleasure it was really us. pleasure to talk to you so we'll see you next time bye for now